Building a garden has everything to do with sparking imagination and learning the language needed for the space to speak. While this side garden is really shaping up, there's still something missing. This arch, it frames the view and it opens up space to a new room. The path leads the person to that place, but where does it lead to? There needs to be a focal point. There needs to be a place where you get to. And that's where I intend to put a large flower um, pot or container over in that point over there. And that will ground the view and it will frame, it will be framed by the arch and it will lead the person to that point with a colorful flower display. If we analyze what makes a beautiful garden resonate with us, we will discover that it uses the elements of design to create a successful composition. Creating a successful spatial composition is a lot like creating any other piece of art. Many of the same principles that guide the construction of a good painting apply to building a pleasant space. The only difference is that the elements apply not only to the flat field we see, but to the three-dimensional field we experience. Line is the fundamental element for creating composition. It helps organize space and lead the viewer around. Line can have different qualities. A straight line leads to fast movement, efficiency, stability. I chose to use curvy broken lines to flank the path precisely to allow a slower experience to the garden. I wanted the eye to wander and ricochet until it could finally arrive at a destination. In a way, by following this zigzag curvy path, the viewer goes on a longer, slower journey. Mystery and discovery are increased, as well as space and time for contemplation. Of course, in this tiny side garden, this happens in a much smaller scale. But when these concepts are expanded to a greater scale, the effect is even more noticeable. Think of how different the experience is of going along a straight highway in the American desert versus exploring the winding mountain roads of Pennsylvania. Since I had a path laid out, I needed to emphasize the destination by using a focal point. The focal point is another important compositional element as it helps organize the experience creating a hierarchy of interest. You can create focal points by increasing complexity in an area, mixing more shapes, colors, and textures in a more concentrated space. Having lines lead you there is also an effective way of organizing the focal point. In my case, the path and the logs were already serving that purpose. So by moving this large structural pot to the end of the path and planting it there with a variety of different plants would hopefully create an incentive to travel down the path and arrive at this area of greater interest. I decided to plant some of my extra seedlings in this container. I had not planned for this container, so I was using what I had at hand. After topping it off with fresh potting soil and mixing it with the old substrate that was already there, I went about planting a varied selection of plants. Summer invites new had gotten an extra lavender start laying around so I chose to include it within this container. I also added some basil seedlings that had grown. Hopefully they would help impart a pleasant scent when brushing past them. I also added some zinnias for color as well as the extra passion fruit vines I had not found at home yet. You, you want taller plants, plants to add color as well as some trailing plants. Certainly, I would have chosen different plants if I were designing this container from scratch without having to rely only with what I had already at hand. But I was making the best out of the situation. And just by having the large ceramic pot at the end of the path, the space was already looking better. seasons I could plan ahead for more striking plants that work better together in a container. I say this because usually it is best to choose plants with striking and contrasting leaf colors and shapes when building a display on a container. Colorful leaves 
are more worthwhile because they last longer than blooms. While zinnias can pack a visual punch, I knew the ones I had would eventually become ungainly for the container. Since they are larger plants, they do better when planted directly in the ground. But I was happy to experiment this time and learn what works best. A good garden must be slowly cultivated and discovered rather than implanted. It takes time. It is important to keep a container well watered since it tends to dry up faster and plant roots cannot access the lower soil layers where water can be found. A couple of weeks later, some plants were showing good signs of growth while others were languishing a bit. I had volunteer sunflowers growing beside it. I allowed them to stay, taking a more hands-off approach, letting the garden collaborate with me. Coming up in the next block, I will share how the side garden changed throughout the season, right after this commercial. If you enjoyed the videos and would like to support the channel, you can purchase an original painting or drawing in my Etsy shop, or become a patron in my Patreon. Summer was fast approaching and like always, I had plenty of extra seedlings laying around that needed a home. I usually give priority to food crops and squeeze in flowers after wherever I can. I had a full tray of dianthus seedlings that needed a home. As for these dianthus, I plan to intersperse them throughout the garden and see if they bloom in little pockets everywhere. I think that's going to look really neat. My strategy was simple, overplant and see what happened. These dianthus starts I had previously raised from seed were a low growing variety with beautiful dark blooms with white edges. They were also supposed to bloom in the first season. Unlike other dianthus, such as the classic biannual Prince William variety that grows only foliage for a full year, only to bloom profusely on the second year and subsequently die. I had already planted taller plants on the outer walls of the path, so I hope to keep the central path portion a bit shorter with these dianthus, filling up the spots near the path. This plan would work if enough sunlight could reach the path throughout the season. There was more than enough light right now as summer approached, but I knew it could become a challenge later on as the other taller crops started to grow uncontrollably. Despite this potential setback, I continued populating the path with these flowers. Then I found other spots elsewhere throughout the garden to establish the remaining one. But there was one thing I was not expecting that ended up jeopardizing these beautiful flowers. As it turns up, groundhogs eat dianthus and apparently love to do so. Slowly their population was raised with only a few ones being missed by chance. A few bloomed, so I got to see how beautiful the flowers are only to reinforce the tragedy. But all in all, the food crops that were out of the groundhog reach did grow a lot, creating a real food forest, just without the flowers I had hoped for. By the beginning of fall, the side garden looked more like a jungle. This is a real wild garden at this point. And there's always something magical about this stage of growth. Although, again, due to the mosquitoes, it's kind of hard to enjoy it. But things have been competing. You have corn with beans trellising up it. And I'm actually surprised that I got popcorn from that spot. It's already ready to pick, even with all the competition. And I actually got a lot of cucumbers. I haven't filmed them, all the harvests, but I got several batches of cucumbers. And they're still producing, and this is in August. I've never seen anything like this. Crazy. But sometimes the garden just surprises you in ways you didn't expect. Now, one thing that I wanted to see happen is for flowers to be growing in the bottom, and I had planted them, but the groundhog did eat all the zinnias that I had here, and also the hollyhock, so at the end I have just the vines that were able to grow beyond its reach. So I wish the groundhog wouldn't destroy everything, but that's part of the process. 
and can't complain, it needs to eat also. And I'm sure it appreciates organic food as much as I do.